Hello everyone, I'm putting on some glasses so I can see what, what, I'm, what I've written. <laughs> uh, there's more than one kind of glasses though. It, uh, God puts on the glasses and he lets us know that we have glasses of faith. Faith is the substance of those things that are, that are expected. And so he wants a new, he wants us to bring us into a new life. And his, his glasses is made of absolute eyes, his eyes. The eyes of the Lord go to and fro on the earth. And uh, he's got eyes too. And he gives those attributes to his body what we call the church which is his body and members in particular and so uh, I'm going to uh, minister a little bit today of the new creation mind the Bible said if any man be in Christ he is a new creature or a new creation now, a new creation if, if you were to say well the, there's a new creation coming to my house you wouldn't, ex you, you wouldn't know what to expect because the new creation is a new person, is a new inside and out. A new creation is a new creation. It's like uh, we're born into this world and we come out the same uh, physical creature as, we, as uh, our parents were, hopefully. And, uh, and yet we're talking about a, a creation of God. Therefore, if we're in Christ, we are a new cre creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. Now, what does that new look like? And that's what we're going to uh, share a little bit about uh, today. The new creation of the new the mind of the new creation is an eternal mind. An eternal mind he had no beginning, had no end. An eternal mind is a forever mind. Now, if we have a forever mind, what kind of attributes does that forever mind give us? What are we able to see? How we are we able to see? How are we able to hear? A new creature, cre a new creation hears different than an old creation. And so we form attitudes by things that we hear, that we, that's happened to us. And sometimes, and a lot of times, we'll live in the effects of those things that's happened to us in our life here on earth. But when we come to Christ, we have been given a new mind. A new mind. The mind of Christ. The mind of the anointed. Now what does that look like and how does it, how does it, Function and so we're we're going to go a little bit about into those things uh, on the broadcast today because this eternal mind that what always was in other words what we receive in Christ has been from the beginning to the end in other words we went through the garden we went through a lot of different things in Christ the new creation that we are now we already went through many many things that we can hardly describe but uh, the holy spirit gives us wisdom and he is the mover and the shaker of that mind that we are now it was and is the mind of christ it had no beginning and it has no ending it always was now that's something that's something within you always was and there's a mind in you that always was now how do we capture that mind and we're going to go a little bit into that when we became a believer we became we became what we were before the fall what we were before the time when i say we i'm talking about the eternal person that you are now that we are the word exhorts us to be renewed, be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Jesus made this possible by his death and resurrection and our new birth. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. 
when the Bible speaks of before the foundations of the world. It speaks of before time began. Now, it, in the flesh, we can remember. How far back can we remember? Well, when we, were, we can't remember. Uh, we, were, we were born. Uh, we were in our mother for nine months, and then we were born. And when we were born, we were born with the only thing we had was a, was a natural mind. Now, and and but we're talking about a new mind now that we can be born again, and that's what the Bible says about being born again, being born again, being born of of a of a, in a in coming out of a new creation. It speaks of before the foundations of the world. It speaks of before time began. The word world is the word eon, and which means age without end. Age without end. Jesus is called the ages of ages. <laughs> he always was, and he always will be. He and the Father are one. Hallelujah. The word <coughs> there is the word ion. Jesus is called the ages of ages. He is the beginning and the end. He became a man that he might bring man back into his eternalness. In other words, he became one of us before the fall so that we can become one of him. We are in Christ. He that is in Christ is a new creation. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. When the Apostle Paul admonishes, admonishes us to be renewed in the spirit of our mind, that is what he's talking about. Being renewed in the spirit or that which teaches our mind. That is the mind of Christ. The mind that always was. The Bible says we have the mind of Christ. Much of our thoughts have been derived from our history on the earth and the good and evil. Good and evil. That is part of the flesh creating its own righteousness. The righteous, that is a new, the new man, is received and understood by faith. Now that's the secret, that's the secret right there. Faith. Faith is the substance. How do we lay hold of it? How do we lay hold of people that have been raised and, and went through life and experienced life in the flesh? What we call the flesh, which is our the old nature. That's all we had to live by. But now we're talking about how to move that old nature into the new that we are. This faith is the gift of God, the agency that receives grace. By faith are you saved through grace, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. This grace produces the salvation promised in his word. By grace are you saved through faith. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. Now, let's go into the, the, the movement of the new creation and how he communicates that faith in our lives so we can communicate it out, so we can lay hold of it ourselves, lay hold of the knowledge and then be able to share the knowledge with others in love. Faith is, now I've, so many times I, I, as I teach, I, I, I bring this scripture up and, and it's a principle of life in the spirit. We need to learn it, not just in the letter, but by the spirit. Faith is the substance of things expected. That word hope means expecting, expectation, to expect, 
hope is not well maybe I just hope so see our, our English language takes that to a lower place but when we expect something we expect it of God in terms of a promise being made is absolute we must see things that are given to us in terms of faith as an absolute and continue even though we go it will go through trials it'll go through situation well what about this what about that what about that you can think all you want about the what about or the what abouts but that's not going to lay hold of that which is done by faith faith is a prom based on promises and the promises come from the almighty when hope expected the expected end is seen it's no longer called hope hope makes not ashamed it spreads the love of God hope spreads the love of God expectation spreads the love of God because it's based in promise promise of the Almighty and that promise is based upon grace hope expectation and that all comes under the category of the love of God the love of God love the journey of hope hope is a power expectation is a power it sees the unseen as already done <laughs> it sees the unseen that it's already done in our minds, in our hearts, in our believer. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness, and the mouth is con with the mouth confession is made unto the result, unto salvation, unto the result. And that's what our confession must be laid hold of to be able to substantiate what we are believing and communicate that life to those that we speak to and to our own selves sometimes when we go through situations and troubles hope sees the substance of faith expectation sees the substance that we're believing for before the natural eye can see it faith is shaped like the things believed faith is shaped like the things believed now we can say yeah i know faith f-a-i-t-h and what we're talking about we're talking about the things that shape like the things that we believe hope carries faith to its conclusion hope expectation carries faith to its inclusion conclusion to till hope is based on the promises not on conditions hope is based or expectation our expectancy when you're expecting something uh, go to the door I, I was expecting ken so god said go to the door and he hadn't even gone up i come up to the door yet and i opened the door and there he was getting out of his truck because <laughs> i was expecting him and i knew because of his testimony and who he is that he does what he says or he gives you a good reason why he can't. Hallelujah. When you don't know where you are going, God can show you where he has been. When you don't know where you're going, God can show you where he has been. When you are exploring the land of promises, you live in a tent. Like, like Abraham lived in a tent until what? until you became your inheritance came your inheritance comes so we go through the tenth stage until we lay hold of that which we are believing for abraham waited on what god had was building god was building who God was building a, a, a building in a city that's builder and shaper is God. Now, to, to, to give you a, a really a heads up idea, Sarah was Abraham's wife. 
she was 80 years old and God had promised Abraham a seed that would come out of him and Sarah believed that and guess what she at 90 years old I think it was 90 or 80 well, anyway it's beyond the age that where women have babies but that baby was formed it was formed in her womb by the Holy Ghost I'm not saying that Abraham didn't do something but what he what did he have to do with when he was uh, I don't know maybe a hundred years old <laughs> you try to, <laughs> never mind <laughs> bring forth conceived a seed, she conceived a seed and and that had that was brought forth in her old age now you show me a woman that's, that's and I'll show you somebody but the, the point is is that we it was the supernatural it was a new creation a new baby it was yeah it was made after the likeness of Abraham and I and uh, uh, Sarah, but it was a new cr creature that was born, and uh, and uh, so I believe it was Isaac. It was the second. It was his firstborn. What gave her the? What gave her the ability? she judged God and the Bible says that she judged God faithful to his promises that's what the word says Sarah judged God faithful to his promises and that is a realm of faith when we believe when we believe God's promises it will uh, is ours and we lay hold of his promises until he brings them forth that is a secret and that is the mind of the new creation that's in Christ the new creation therefore if any man woman be in Christ they are a new creation and some of these things just help to our thinking process on how does a new creation think he thinks in terms of of his expect his expectation or his hope his hope that will not make ashamed and he lays hold of it for his own personal life and for those that he's sharing with I pray that these words will go forth and lay and 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 touch hearts everyone's heart out there that they may lay hold on their life in Christ a new creation they are and, a, and the product of a new creation will be brought forth god bless you it's been great being with you today god bless you and we'll see you next week